Hook. Airing on OffTheHookSports.com. Your home for real news, real opinions, and what really matters about Tennessee athletics. The Off The Hook podcast at OffTheHookSports.com or Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, or wherever you go for your favorite podcasts. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, TuneIn, iHeart. Like, share, follow, subscribe. Off The Hook with Dave Hooker starts now. A day closer to getting super, the Super Regionals in Knoxville Monster Show lined up today. We will be joined by the flamethrower Ben Joyce. Looking forward to that. Tennessee pitcher who is in the record books. I was uh, visiting with the person who designed this very website that you might be watching this on and uh, helped with this putting us together. And it he's heard of Ben Joyce and he's in Canada. So that tells you how... how newsworthy that guy is also some recruiting news i am joined daily by the two best co-hosts in the biz amanda lafrada and ethan stone amanda how are you this morning you sent me a text message we talked yesterday about big squirrels there are big squirrels yes yes there are big squirrels there's a top 12 list okay well their top 12 list of big squirrels um ethan so we'll visit with ben joyce tennessee and the super regionals and again it's just it's it's really amazing what this baseball team has done i was talking to tom set kobiak yesterday and he's the sports information director head sports information director and he started in 2005 with baseball and i was like can you believe what's happening? And he said, it, it really is just unbelievable. The five years that Tony Vitello has been there. You have to remember he was there in 2005. They're going through a coaching change. That's no fun. Really baseball in 2005 is the assignment. They see the person that was new that wasn't established because nobody cared. And now, and now seriously, and now everybody cares, Ethan, it's pretty phenomenal. Yeah, there's no reason for everyone not to care. And, and kind of getting back to your friend in, in Canada knowing Ben Joyce, I feel like everybody in the country <laughs> knows Ben Joyce at, at this point, right? Uh, he's a dude that's breaking college world records and, and 0.3 miles away from breaking the all-time baseball record of, of the fastest pitch ever thrown, ever. That That's pretty incredible that he just happens to be on Tennessee's roster this year. And uh, that's the reason why people do care is he's helping Tennessee moving to being one of the best teams in the nation and a front runner for the national championship, the college world series. Yeah. Pretty, pretty cool stuff. I'm, I'm excited. I, I can't remember you know, I am a Yankees fan, so maybe like a World Series type of thing. I, admittedly, with baseball, like most of the people in this region, I get interested when something's happening. Um, and obviously, something has been happening with Tennessee baseball, or the games are significant. Amanda, you got you got both against Notre Dame this weekend. I can't imagine a, a, a better scenario. Sit back, watch the game. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's baseball typically to me feels kind of like soccer um, where no one's really interested until the World Cup, to be honest. So like until USA is playing in the World Cup, nobody is interested. And I feel like until, you know, this postseason, I mean, there has been some interest with UT being as good and as dominant as they are in the regular season, but this postseason hits and everybody, everybody is a baseball fan and everybody knows everything about it all of a sudden. So it feels like kind of like when the World Cup happens and the USA is in it and wow. all of a sudden people are interested. Now, very fair. Some to get you caught up, I want, to, I want you to be sure and check out offthehooksports.com. Please follow us on Facebook and I would certainly appreciate it if you would subscribe and set up your notifications so you get the content. We've had interviews with uh, Tennessee current players. We've had interviews with John Adams, um, gosh, Paul Feinbaum. We can go on and on and on. It's been a great first week. So we want you to get on board off the hooksports.com. And please, please, we would certainly appreciate it if you would subscribe to the YouTube channel. So let's get caught up. Celtics beat the Warriors last night. 116 to an even 100. Steph Curry with a foot injury. He said, we'll see how it responds. Ethan, I'm in the minority here, perhaps. 
but I'm not surprised. I thought that this Celtics team, I will take defense nine times out of ten. I thought that this Celtics team was better defensively. I picked the Celtics in six, and I'm probably one of the few people in the United States of America to do that. Yeah, I'm I'm going to go even more. I think I said it the other day. I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's Celtics in five. I really wouldn't. I, I said that after the first games. They're just playing really well right now. I don't, I don't care if the Warriors are starting to heat up as well. Uh, at a certain point, you're running into what has been a buzzsaw in this Celtics team. I believe they've lost, what is it, 10 games since mid-December? Something like that. Something crazy. Uh, they're just on a run. And if, if teams are – if you're running into a team like that that's firing on all cylinders, I, I don't see any reason – the Warriors, even with their hot shooting, would be able to beat them. And to be honest, it hasn't been as hot as of years of late. So I, I see the Celtics taking this 5-6, maybe 7 if Steph just goes on an absolute burner, or if Clay goes on a burner. He has to shoot better than he did, I feel like, the first couple games. And, and so does Steph, to be quite frank with you. I feel like I feel like that Clay will have one of those games. Um, and Steph probably will, but I just feel like Clay's do. I don't think he's a hundred percent back from all of his injuries. I think he will be next year. But um, Grant Williams, you know, I, I still the former ball just really respect how he accepts his role. You talked about how matchups were a little bit different in this series as opposed to previously in the playoffs, Ethan. But I, I you know, he just accepts it, and he has an impact no matter how long he's in the game. And, man, that's the type of player you want. Yeah, right there, uh, wrapped up in a bow, is the reason I'd say the Celtics are, are, are winning this series, not necessarily because of Grant Williams, but the combined effort of Williams, Pritchard, Robert Williams, other guys like that, the role players, are playing very well for the Celtics, and they're just not for the Warriors. At, at times it feels like Draymond, Steph, fill in the blank there, has to fill in. Jordan Poole has not had a good series. Otto Porter has not had a good series. Andrew Wiggins had a fantastic series moving into the finals, and, and he's kind of been a little MIA. And just little stuff like that, I feel like that's really leaning the uh, pendulum in, in favor of, of the Celtics. We're going to bring in our special guest now. We'll get to that recruiting news in a bit. It is Ben Joyce, pitcher for the University of uh, Tennessee. So now we have someone that holds a uh, quite a feat on the show and um I, I don't know anybody that's done it um an unassisted triple play amanda turned an unassisted triple play bin in softball that's, awesome. that's what i was that's what i was referring <laughs> yeah. to did you know that i did not no <laughs> that's awesome i did thanks that was, that was pretty awesome <laughs> i was 12 i peaked at 12. Oh, okay <laughs> well, Ben just starting to peak. First of all, man, sincere congratulations. Watching from afar, um, I think you guys are going to continue to do great things. But whatever happens, this has been a really, really cool season. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's been awesome. It's it's really kind of been unreal this whole year. So, t- tell me about the excitement level. How it's it's changed. I mean. I'd, I'd say a few people knew who you were in January. Now, when you go into a restaurant or something, I'm, I'm guessing you get noticed and recognized a lot more. Oh yeah, it's been it's been crazy. I mean, before the year, I don't I don't think anyone would have known who I was if I walked in a restaurant. But I mean, now I'll go to the I went to see the Top Gun movie the other day, and people recognize me in there, and just kind of all around, just getting recognized. It's been really cool. Uh, I mean, the way the Tennessee fans have, have really embraced this whole team has been awesome. Just the excitement level for every game. And we're selling out midweek games. It's, it's been a crazy experience just throughout the year and, and seeing the excitement and, and how the fans have really embraced this team. When was the first time you threw 105? Not, not necessarily in a game, but just where you threw it, you know, like, wow, I just hit 105. Yeah, I was, I was getting close. Um, like right before the season started, uh, but I, I never did it in, in an actual game like that I knew of until the Auburn series. Um, that that was the first time I threw it in a game and, and really saw the number, and it kind of it kind of hit me. I was I was like, wow, that's that's pretty crazy. I, I never would have thought that would happen. But yeah, I, I don't I don't know. I could have done it before just without a radar gun, but that was the first time I really saw it on a radar gun. That's pretty cool. So what was your Twitter feed and, and, and inbox like after that pitch? 
Yeah, I actually had to turn my, all my notifications off uh, for Twitter and Instagram just because it kind of blew up with um, I, get, getting tweeted by like Barstool and, and Andrew McCutcheon tweeted at me. That was pretty cool. Um, but it, it was crazy for a little bit. I had to turn everything off and just kind of get away from all the all the Twitter stuff. Ethan, I know he's uh, covered you throughout the season. He's going to jump in here. He's he's got the, he's got the tough questions, Ben. So cool. just be on guard. <laughs> yeah, I, I've got the toughest question to start. How did you like Top Gun Maverick? Oh my gosh, oh, yeah. it's such a good movie. I'm, I'm a big Top Gun fan, so I, I thought they they made it really well. It, it was a really good movie. Yeah, I'm now a big Ben Joyce fan. Now that you <laughs> like the movie, I mean, I was your age when I was watching the original. <laughs> yeah, that, that's one of my favorite movies, actually. I gotta really? get in there and watch it. All right, mm-hmm. uh, talk to me, Goose. Go, Ethan. All right, yeah. Um, a, a little more serious question: Were you throwing 100 miles an hour in high school? Because I know, obviously, you went to Farragut here in Knoxville. So, w- was it as deadly the pitch then, or, or was it kind of subdued? No, yeah, not at all. Actually, I was. I mean, my freshman year tryouts, I was throwing like 65, and then I kind of started growing throughout high school. And I think my senior year, I topped out at 91, 92. Um, and then the summer after my senior year, I, I got up to 95 and just kind of slowly started creeping up from there. But no, I wasn't, I wasn't anything like that in high school. It was, it was kind of just like a low upper eighties, low nineties fastball my senior year. I feel like that's a milestone for some pitchers. When, when you first reach 100, A, when was that? And, and B, I guess, how did that feel knowing uh, you're, you're throwing good stuff out there? Yeah, that was a, uh, it was in an inner squad my, my sophomore year at Walter State. Um, right before the season started, we were, we were thrown in an inner squad and we kind of always had a radar gun there just to, just to see. And I was throwing and I saw my coach pull out his phone and start, start recording. And I was like, Oh, that's kind of weird. I, I've never seen him do that before. And then, uh, after, after the inning, I, I saw the video and the kid goes, Oh my gosh, a hundred. And that, that was a pretty cool experience just to know that I, I got up to triple digits for the first time. And uh, yeah, that, that was, that was exciting. But I mean, now it's kind of like. I almost kind of don't even remember what that felt like now that I'm kind of up, up here now. But Yeah, t- Tennessee's faced a lot of really good pitching staffs this season, I feel like. Notre Dame is very different than Georgia Tech and Campbell in that they're very pitching heavy. Just What do you think they bring to uh, to this Super Regional Series coming up? Yeah, I think it's going to be fun. I mean, they, they seem like a really good team from what I've seen. Um, I think it's going to be, be super – just the environment's going to be really electric with, with our fans and – and we'll see how, how that goes. Um, but, yeah, I think it's going to be a really good series pitching-wise, just from what I've seen. It looks like they have a great pitching staff, and it looks like their offense can can find ways to, to score runs too. So I think it's going to be be a pretty exciting series this weekend. I, I got one last question. I, I see your hat. What is that on there? Am, am I just dumb? Have I not seen that before? Or? Yeah, it's like a – it's smoky with a, with a baseball, throwing up a baseball. They gave it to us right before – I think before we left for Florida – they gave us these hats. I don't know if they're going to start selling them or not, but we, we got a couple of these before we left. I like it. That's pretty cool. Yeah. That's smoky. How did y'all not see that? <laughs> I can't see that. Yeah, I'm, I'm I couldn't like, I couldn't tell from here. I thought sorry. I had seen it at some point in the season, just on Twitter or something like that, but I wanted mm-hmm. to confirm. Yeah, yeah. No, they, they gave them to us before Florida. We've all been just wearing them nonstop. Probably my favorite hat. <laughs> uh, talk about the difference if you if you can uh, between the, the mindset of being a closer. I know you've been asked this a million times, but being a closer and, and, and being a starter, which do you prefer in general? I honestly love both in, in different ways. Just starting is awesome, just because you can go through your whole routine and and kind of get you have like a couple hours to get prepared and, and locked in for the start. Uh, and then it's just kind of like your game at that point. You you just go out there and, and go as many innings as you can. But I mean, when you're closing, it's kind of like, all right, this is it. Like, let's let's shut it down. It's a lot more adrenaline, I feel like, which which is awesome. Um, and and the big time situation, it's it's always fun. But I, I really like them both in in different ways, and I'm really just mm-hmm. happy doing either one, honestly. How do you how do you manage the adrenaline as as a closer? I kind of almost almost use it. I think it helps me throw a little harder sometimes, like especially with with the fans here at, in Tennessee. Just you can hear them kind of get up, and when there's two outs, they're all on their feet and and clapping and stuff. I think it, it really adds to kind of keep me locked in and, and focused for what I'm trying to do: throw strikes and and get it by the hitter. So it's 
I think I almost try to use it to my advantage. Maybe you get a couple more miles per hour or, or throw a couple more strikes. When you watch tape of, of Notre Dame, they don't hit a lot of home runs. How do they generate runs? It, they seem to be a pretty scrappy team. They, they, they can bunt and, and push runs across that way, and, and they'll do things to try to throw the defense off. And they, they just seem to be pretty a pretty sound team all around. So they'll they'll do what they need to do to, to move runners over and, and get big hits when they need them to get the runs in. And then their pitching staff seems to be able to hold teams to, to low runs. So it'll be, it'll be exciting just kind of seeing a different style of baseball and, and seeing how they play the game. So I have just a question more about the personality of the team. Um, you guys are definitely um, – definitely a little not out there but you're you're very confident you're very uh it looks like you're having a lot of fun so is it really like that you know behind the scenes are you guys just out there just doing your thing and and just having the time of your life oh yeah I mean even at practice we're having a great time like this is the closest team I've ever been on and we're always joking around or or like are messing with people or even coach V kind of gets in on it. Sometimes it's just like, it's a fun group and we're always happy to go out there and, and be together on the baseball field. It's just, we, we kind of always just cherish all those, all those moments and we've gotten super close this year. So we're really like that all the time, not even just on the baseball field. It's, it's, it's been a really fun experience. Okay. So you've got the fur coat, you got the hat, you've got the bat. I love bat flipping, by the way. I think it's awesome. If you watch like J Japanese baseball, they flip it and it's like a big deal. I don't know if you ever watch it. It's super cool. But I, I mean, I love all that stuff. Okay. But has Tony Vitello ever said, maybe that's a little too far guys. Has that conversation ever happened? Uh, not really. I mean, sometimes he's got to calm Drew Gilbert down a little bit. He gets a little amped up sometimes, but I mean, other than that, he, he's just as into it as we are. And he's, he's ready to, to go. He would go out there and, and play right now. He's, he's super fiery on the bench and he just, he just loves letting us be, be ourselves out there and do what we think we need to do. So he's kind of all in on all that stuff. Ben, this is, uh, I know your expectations are right? there to win the college world series. Okay, but you know, as as fans on the outside, when I talk to fans, I, I ask them, "What are expectations? What would you be pleased with this season?" And and really, it feels like an all or nothing season. Is that is that pressure or is that a good thing? I think that's a good thing. I mean, that's kind of how how we feel too. We've especially after last year going to to Omaha and, and losing the first two games, it kind of left a bad taste in our mouth and. We really just – the SEC championship was awesome. It, it was a great experience, but we know we've got bigger goals and we want to go all the way and, and win the whole thing. So I think it's it's kind of just what our expectations are as well, and we're just, we're just ready to go out there and, and play baseball every day with each other and take it one game at a time and see where we end up. Ben, I appreciate the time. It, it means a lot. Um, you know, you got a lot of people rooting for you uh, on a personal and team level. It's super cool to see what you guys have done. So best of luck uh, this weekend. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say it. Best of luck in the next step. And uh, know that you've done something really special and really memorable that will be around for decades. I still remember when Todd Helton was pitching and hitting home runs. And that was, oh, my gosh. 1996 <laughs> so i mean i people still remember that so you've done something that's that's pretty special and you're going to go on to do more things in your career but uh, knoxvillians are always going to love you man so um, oh. congratulations on that. You, you've, you've done a lot and uh i appreciate you taking the time for us yeah thank you so much thank you for having me thank you sir uh ben joyce joins us that was uh pretty awesome 105 and a half miles an hour i think basically what i would do is just cry if somebody <laughs> threw a pitch that fast at me i think i would say please just slow it down we just want you to slow it down yeah and it's, you can, it's absolutely great. unfair I, I remember I, I went to cover a game for the Beacon while I was I was still with them this season. They were playing some mid-level team. I really wish I could remember who it was. It might have been Lipscomb. Not really sure. And and Ben Joyce gets, gets called in relief. And he's throwing like 
10 straight 100 mile an hour pitches to these Lipscomb guys. And, and I'm just like, what, what are they supposed to do? Like, like they're just supposed to stand there and just kind of let it happen. Cause I don't think they got a single hit, maybe one, maybe one of their better guys got one off him. He didn't go for too long, maybe two innings, but God, they're insane. fairly decent. Like Lipscomb's <laughs> a fairly decent team. I, I went there my freshman year of college and they were actually not bad. So for them to just be completely held to like nothing is actually a pretty good. That's it seemed like they couldn't awesome. do anything against him, genuinely. Like yeah. when I watched it, I walked mm-hmm. in, I was like, this just doesn't really even seem like they're playing the same sport right now. Yeah. Uh, getting to some recruiting news, I want to remind you, great place to uh, watch the games this weekend would be at uh, Big Orange Phillies. You can certainly check them out. Uh, also, they have a great lunch. If you're listening during lunch, they can do that. Uh, they've got uh, quick bites. They get it out and get it to you. It's fresh. And it's absolutely family-friendly right there in Halls, a sports bar that's family-friendly. Big Orange Phillies. Uh, check them out. Uh, they've got darts, billiards, live entertainment, karaoke. If you go to their Facebook page, where you'll be able to see uh, an interview that uh, I had with John Adams at the Knoxville News Sentinel, you'll see all that they've got going on, and it is a lot. So recruiting news coming up after this. Stay tuned. This is Off the Hook, and it's a presentation of Off the Hook Sports. Hi, Mike Davis here with City Heating and Air, reminding you to always dare to compare. Our team provides quality local heating and air service, installation, and maintenance across East Tennessee. We use only the best equipment like American Standard Heating and Air Conditioning for your residential, new construction, or commercial needs. Honesty, dependability, and customer satisfaction have been the cornerstones of our business since 1961. City Heat and Air. There's your to own the more that owns every job, then get to Vasti Lawn and Garden in Cleveland and get you a Toro. I'm David Vasti, here to talk to you about Toro. With a Toro Zero Turn, you'll get more out of every minute and you'll reach the finish line faster. At Vasti's, we like to say, no matter if you're mowing three acres a week or 11 lawns a day, homeowners and business owners alike find confidence in equipment they can trust from top to bottom. Vasti Lawn and Garden, Highway 60 North in Cleveland. Man alive, it's worth the drive. I thought there was a point during that Ben Joyce interview where maybe Amanda, that uh, your your dog tried to attack you or something, or something that happened there, or somebody telling you it was was that the hubby telling you bye for the day, or what was what was that? Was that was that imagine? Anyway, it's supposed I, to be. A I se- have no idea. I think you're imagining <laughs> things. I don't. <laughs> yeah, no, it's supposed to be a segue uh, into your pet. Amanda has a lovely pet, and that pet needs chill pills because it is yappy. Uh, chill pills are from Craft Treats. Go to crafttreats.com. That's crafttreats.com. They've got the full spectrum at CBD treats. Helps with situational anxiety. Man, we had thunderstorms last night. I gave my dog Thaddeus one, and he was much better off. He gets scared because of thunderstorms guys because we had a huge massive tree fall in our house during a thunderstorm about two years ago so he gets very scared like just shaking it's it's you know i'm not an empathetic person when it comes to pets but i even feel sorry for him he was just fine at that point after that so 
that was uh that's the key to craft treats go to crafttreats.com all right we were going to get to some recruiting notes and we are going to do that i'm going to talk to amanda here in uh, just a little bit she's got a take on this now 66 women are uh, claiming that deshaun watson the quarterback that was with the texans now with the cleveland browns uh, sexually assaulted them uh, they're all masseuses i've got some pretty strong thoughts on that as well and jimmy haslam who has strong ties to tennessee is the owner of the browns and he gave him an unprecedented guaranteed contract but the key is to that contract he only gets paid a million dollars this year so he could be suspended for the whole year and everything's fine i don't think the nfl is going to take that we'll talk about that Recruiting news for the Vols, Carnell Tate revealed Tuesday night that he's planning to announce his college decision in the near future. The five-star class of 2023 from IMG Academy. He's a wide receiver. He posted on his Instagram that he intends to make his choice as early as, quote, next week. And he said, quote, when I find a videographer, I'll drop the... Con <laughs> I'm sorry. When I find... <laughs> When I find a videographer, I'll drop the commitment date. I okay. That's like saying I'm gonna Amanda. That's like saying I'm gonna accept this new job, but first I have to get a videographer and drop it on social media before I accept it. It's gotten crazy. Like recruiting <laughs> has gotten gotten like absolutely nuts. Like, who needs a videographer to announce where you're going to school? I mean, it's <laughs> this whole thing with, with <laughs> these, like, signing days and all of that stuff with people pulling out puppies. And, you know, that was even a little over the top back then. And now we have videographers to announce where we're going to school. Like, this is insane. I'm sorry. This is insane. You're, like, 17 or 18. The only thing... Two things. The only thing that really ever bothered me in the announcement stuff was when they would tease, like pick up a hat and then go to a different one. I thought that was just darn rude because not only do you have the fans involved, but you've got coaches that have been away from their families for countless hours recruiting you and you tease them and go back. And maybe the coach knows. I understand all that. I just thought that was incredibly rude. That's the one that bothered me the most. I mean, that. Yeah. That, I mean, it's that. not, it's not great. I mean, it's not a good look. Let's be honest. It's not a good look, but how many of these kids have we, you know, and they're kids, like people forget that they're, they're not, you know, grown men. These are still kids. And how many of these kids have we put on a pedestal only to have them either act out or, you know, do something crazy in college or not even make it that far. I mean, we've, we've put these people like way up there and then we, we act like, Oh my, I cannot believe anybody would do that when they do stuff that's outlandish. I mean, they've been put on a pedestal their entire lives and it's honestly, it's our fault. Yeah. And I do, we're going to have a special guest on to talk about high recruiting expectations pretty soon, because I think the first one was Jared Garantano when he did the whole, he was in downtown New York city and he did like a produced video. I think that was one of the first along those lines. And Jared Garantano had a fine college career, but he didn't live up to the hype. I feel like that puts extra hype on a young man. Um, same thing with, with Nico. Uh, I mean, I think that, it's it's great that we got him. I really don't care if he got eight million dollars or not. If that's what he's worth, the market will show that. Um, but he raises expectations so high that anything short of Peyton Manning and people are going to say hey, he's pretty good, but he could be a very good football player. I mean, who wouldn't uh, you know take a guy that's right now? If you can guarantee yourself a B plus quarterback in the SEC. You should take that, but he's got the expectations somewhere completely different. But we'll see. Uh, Tennessee quarterback Hendon Hooker will look a bit different when he's throwing the ball this upcoming season. They are working on tightening up his mechanics, according to Josh Heifel, Tennessee head coach in uh, The Athletic by Joe Rexrode. Uh, they need to. Um, his, his mechanics, I noticed last year, well, for the very first time I saw him, 
are loose. They're not as loose as Joe Milton's. Um, and But, yeah, he's – He's got a little bit of extra motion when he brings the ball back that I noticed. Again, uh, Milton's kind of a, a step beyond. Um, but that's something that uh, Hendon Hooker needs to work at for this season, but also uh, for the NFL, just getting the ball out quicker, even because you can get beat up pretty quick in that league. Yeah, yeah, you definitely can. And I, I find it interesting that you bring up Garantano and then, and then we go into Hooker. It's it just really details how much of a factor coaching has on these players. Like for Hooker to do what he did last season, and for Heupel to come in and say, "Hey, there are still massive ways you can improve here," and there's no reason to think he's not going to be better next season. Garantano really never got that. I feel like he he kept getting trotted out there, and that's probably why the fan base kind of went against him a little bit. Because to be honest. He, like you said, was not an awful quarterback by any means, but he kept getting put out there, so the fans had more chances to say what they wanted to against him. Now, obviously, this section isn't about Jared Garantano. I'll get back to Hooker. It's very interesting that that Heupel has, I guess, that to say, hey, you did very well last year. You can do much better here, and you can do much better in the NFL. You need to do this. And he tinkers it a little bit. That's nice to see. That's nice to see from from both Hooker being, I guess, willing to go through that and change the way he throws, which obviously worked pretty well last season, and, and trust that Hype will get him to a point where he really needs to be, and, and that can elevate the offense even more than it was last season. Also in that story uh, by Joe Rexrode in The Athletic, uh, Hypel, Josh Hypel says, quote, uh, talking about NIL money, sorry, um, talking about NIL money and the Spire group, uh, Heupel said, quote, we don't really have any interaction with them. We've embraced NIL. I'll just go back to my playing career. Those are things I would have liked to have the opportunity to take advantage of. You play for a powerful brand here at UT, but you have your brand too, keeping your eyes on the most important thing, which is your academic success and how you grow as a football player. I take two things from that. One, um, that last part, growing your own brand, is clearly a recruiting statement. That is what he is telling the young men that they will be able to do when they come to Tennessee. Good part. The other part, quote, we don't really have an interaction with them. Okay. I don't. <laughs> okay. If you put in really, that means that you're kind of quantifying. Yeah, I'm sure they have interaction. I'm sure they say this guy it would be great if he got money, but not this guy who's a three-star long snapper. Okay, so it's it's impossible for me to believe in my mind that there's not a couple of burner phones at the very least where they can text, "Hey, this would be a good guy to reach out to." I, I you know, I know they're not supposed to, but there were there were people that broke the rules in their previous stage, uh, and. Amanda, you're going to bend the rules a little bit. But again, I've got zero problem with with that type of conversation because I've said all along, and I know some people are totally against me on it, but I, I think the kids have worth. The kids are 18 and over. They deserve to be able to make a piece of the pie. But in in the end, I mean, let's come on, Amanda. I mean, they they, they have conversations, I'd say, at least weekly, right? I mean, you have to. I mean, it's it's like when it was the you know the NCAA was was wagging the finger at boosters giving players money. I mean, they still did it. They went around the back end, and and I even know of someone that got uh, his friend to take checks in her name. She would cash them and then give him the money. So, I mean, they still did it. It's It's been done. My question about the NCAA is the reason for the boosters not being able to give players money was because it was an unfair advantage for schools with big boosters. Um, what is the difference now? I mean, you're handing these big-time schools with these recruits, you're handing them, you know, big-time uh, money, I mean, NCAA is not doing it, but the bigger the school and the better the team, the more money the player stands to make. So how is that not an advantage in itself when it comes to uh, financial gain for players? Yeah, I just think there needs to be another level. There are some schools that can probably about 25, 30 in there that could 
pay out some big time money because of the market that they're in. But there needs to be another level because there are other schools that can't. And that's where yeah. it gets unfair. So there's going to be another level of, of football here pretty soon. I think it's going to be around 32, 36 teams somewhere in there. And we'll see where things shake out. I don't know what that does for the Vanderbilts of the world. I mean, that's there are some teams. Uh, Northwestern would be another one. Um, but there are some schools out there that have high academic standing. But do they are their graduates giving back to the university? Are they willing to give back to this NIL recruiting effort? I don't know. I mean, a lot of things are going to shake out. College football, as much as it has changed in the past 10 years, is going to change even more so in the next 10. Uh, we're going to see some crazy stuff. I did see on Facebook where my friend Inky Johnson was uh, visiting with uh, Tom Brady down in Tampa. Of course, um, Tom Brady uh, played a long time for the New England Patriots, winning several Super Bowls for owner uh, Bob Kraft and uh, Bob Kraft in the best segue ever actually visited with the Boston Masai. Celtics. Uh, la yes. Yes. And the Masai I thought it was the visited I'm, I'm, I'm getting there. I'm, I'm getting there. <laughs> As Bob Kraft would say, you got to wait for the happy ending. So the, um, but, <laughs> but he actually visited with the Boston Celtics last night and what I thought was a very surreal and strange uh, locker room drop in after a win. And uh, I don't know, does he need to be there after, midway through the series? Here Watching the Celtics since I've been a kid, and that's a few years ago, back with Bill Russell and Bob Cousy and Sharman and Luskatop. And I love the teams right up through Bird, but seeing this, you guys have something special here. I love the teams right up through Bird. That was like 20, 30 years ago. So I don't know who's played since. There was that yeah. that was a tall guy that was bald. His name was like Barnett or Devin or something like that. Um, but yeah, so the segue continues. Uh, I know you had some pretty strong thoughts on Deshaun Watson, who is now playing well, who is now on the roster, theoretically, for the Cleveland Browns, I guess, owned by Jimmy Haslam, who was a longtime booster at Tennessee, and his dad was probably the biggest booster ever. Um, Amanda, what were your thoughts? Because you're like, I want to say something about Deshaun Watson. So what so, do you want to say? I'm going to go actually the opposite direction of a lot of people. A lot of people are out here, you know, saying – and by no means am I saying what he did was right or that it wasn't morally corrupt because it was, I mean, it's the stuff that he's done is not, not, a, it's, it's bad. I mean, it looks real bad, but when you have a grand jury that doesn't even indict him and public opinion is, you know, basically hanging him out to dry, it, it's a, at what point do we allow our, you know, judicial system to, to run its course? At what point are you guilty until found innocent? I mean, I think that he. There's 66 women, Amanda. There are 66 women. But if you remember, and I know this is uh, comparatively speaking, it's not exactly, you know, right there. But if you remember, A.J. Johnson at, at Tennessee got accused of... That's of, a great example, actually. Yeah. yeah. He got accused of raping. Everybody threw him under the bus. Even the University of Tennessee threw him under the bus. And then he was later acquitted because the quote-unquote victim lied. And I'm not saying that these women are lying. I'm not saying any of that. I'm just saying... People need to, or at least I feel like you keep an open mind. You listen to all the facts when they come out and then you make your decision. But people are just automatically jumping to, you know, obviously he's guilty. He's done it. It's blah, 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 